Welcome back to Anno Talk, all things anodizing. My name is Mark Spencer, sales manager at Akron Anodizing, coming to you live from Plymouth, Minnesota. And it's just absolutely a gorgeous day. Anytime it doesn't snow, it's a gorgeous day. On the call with me, fellow host, are... Uh, this is George O from uh, Chemist at Quaker Houghton. Uh, it's great to see all of you. And after that, we have Tage. Hey, everyone. This is Tage Patel. I'm a director at Tech Yvon. I'm in the Chicago area. I'm looking forward to this uh, interesting discussion here with uh, the rest of the team. Perfect. Perfect. And those handoffs, gentlemen, very smooth. We're getting better. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Today, we're meeting a, another industry figure, Jack Tetro, president of Sanford process corporation hello jack welcome to the podcast welcome hey thanks my matt uh mark <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding with you sorry yeah. I, I, <laughs> hey. All right. hey how many years has it been jack since we saw each other last <laughs> hey thanks mark george <laughs> dave yeah. cash how are you guys doing today yeah. good I'm doing okay. great all right yeah yeah Hey, uh, Jack, it's been a while since we've had a conversation, you and I. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been in the industry for 37 years. Is, is my math right? Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty close. I would say uh, uh, the, the first time I anodized anything was a little bit longer that, ago than that, maybe 1978. But wow. uh, in the industry, solid since uh, uh, 1984. Okay. Wow, 78. So you, uh, how'd you get started in this industry? Uh, it's interesting. I, um, I uh, took a job out of school um, with the Bulba Watch Company uh, here in Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, we were making watches, none of them out of aluminum. Uh, Bulba was approached by Timex to make an aluminum watch for them, uh, low, low, uh, low end watch, but it had a, uh, some unique features it uh, you could change the the bezel with all different colors to match ladies dresses they were all made out of aluminum so we set up an anodized line to meet those needs and that's how we got into anodized wow, so what that's that's interesting was that a hand line jack were you moving racks in and out by hand yeah that would that was so long ago we barely had electric never mind cranes um, <laughs> yes uh, um, we uh we are, in fact, uh, moving pots by hand, yes. All yes. on titanium. Okay. And do you have bright tip going back then as well? Absolutely, sir. Ah, geez. <laughs> Doing that by hand must have been terrible. Uh, yeah, it wasn't fun, but uh, <laughs> we didn't know any better. Right. <laughs> that's right. That's well, you're right. still around, so that's good. That's right. That's right. All the wiser. Okay. <laughs> that's right. So before you started anodizing, Jack, what were you doing then? Uh, were you high school, college? What? Um... Yeah, yeah, well, all of the above. I uh, uh, went to high school before college, like most people, and uh, um, I um, had uh, I I did things the hard way. Uh, I went to college mostly uh, at night because uh, uh, I. Uh, childhood sweetheart and i needed to work and uh yep. so yeah i did it all the wrong way but uh, it worked out in the end <laughs> so you had some uh on the job training as well as uh, your hard you know going to school at night i mean you're you're putting some hours in there to get uh get to where you are today i i sure was mark and uh it made it uh it it made it sweeter uh when i achieved uh, some success so i uh yep. Uh, I never minded hard, hard work. My uh, parents taught me that. And so uh, looking back, I wish I had done it different, but the, the end game is fine. I'm, uh, I'm a pretty happy guy. Perfect. Perfect. And you sound it too, Jack. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, so Jack, I mean, what, uh, here, here you are, um, a young guy and a uh, Bolivar watch. Yeah. How'd you get it? How'd you figure, go down that path to go into anodizing? Well, uh, it, like I said, the anodizing was kind of an accident, uh, okay. but uh, I took a job at Bolivar. Um, I had uh, uh, taken some chemistry courses at, at that time, 
and I thought that was an interesting path. And there was a uh, a position open in the plating department. And they did a lot of gold and silver and rhodium, as you might imagine, as a watch company. And so I took that job, and um, I, uh, the uh, head chemist there took me under his wing, and uh, kind of the rest is history. Whatever he wanted, I was always a can-do guy. Yep. So uh, yeah, things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, you started out titrating tanks and and, and and chemical analysis, and then getting out to racking, unracking, all that kind of good stuff. Everything. Yeah, yeah I did it that's all. A, that's I did a, it all. A bootstrap education, that's for sure. Uh, Hey, Jack, one of the things our, our in- listeners are interested in, since we are meeting you today and me- and they're meeting you as well, you know, what are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do when you get away from it and you're not uh, smelling the sulfuric acid? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy who enjoys being on the water uh, and I am a fisherman. And if I'm on, it's more pleasure to me than being on the beach looking out at the water. So I uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a boat guy, a fisherman. I, I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I dabble in uh, in wine and good food, and I like to cook a little bit. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all good there. <laughs> uh-huh. yep. You mentioned you were uh, from Rhode Island. Is that like wait? Are, you're not still in Rhode Island, are you? I am. That's uh-huh. the ocean state. Um, Born and raised here, uh, married my childhood sweetheart, and decided to stay. Oh, that's really nice. That is great. But yeah, I, I did not know Rhode Island was a fishing place. It's called the Ocean State, my friend. We had, a, uh, well, uh, Rhode Island has a, a lot of shoreline, a, a, a lot. The bay almost cuts Rhode Island in half, so the ocean comes right up, splits the state in half. So um, we're very wow. tiny, but uh, it's great fishing place. Okay. Huh. Maybe I'll, I don't know, visit Rhode Island and do some fishing yeah. there. Jack, I, I noticed um, Johnson and Wales. Was that, was that your school as well? Actually, yeah, it was because uh, that's where I got my uh, uh, degree in business administration and everybody thinks it as a cooking school and I got to eat a lot of great food, but. Uh, so Jack, is that where you picked up some of your cooking skills as well? Yeah, well, I have to say I got that more from friends. Okay, okay, gotcha. So what's your go-to, Jack? You're going to have people over. What are you going to prepare for us? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Uh, But I got a lot lot of things. I I don't know if I should get into my culinary talents (laughs) because some of my friends might think that uh, that's beyond my scope of expertise. Uh, well, I mean, if, if you're comfortable inviting people over and making food with for them, that's that's enough, honestly. Oh, OK. Then I do that. Yes. Yes, I do that. Yep, yep, yep. Outstanding. So, um, Jack, what what's your current position? You're president of Sanford Process, right? Corporation. Yes. What do you do? Yes. Well, Sam, Sanford, let's um, uh, just give you a quick overview. Sanford. Yeah. Uh, Process is a long established company. Um, I started way back in the, I think it's in the 40s oh. with a guy named Paul Sanford. Um, and um, the claim to fame was an anodized additive, Paul Sanfran. Um, and the, um, they also got into rectifier uh, manufacturing, um, specialized uh, rectifiers that uh, have an ACDC current uh, going at the same time, not, you know, uh, at, you know, um, sorry, I'm losing the words, guys, but, but at the, at the same time, AC and DC hits the tank. Mm-hmm. So, and that's how they got started. And from that technology, we were able to develop a lot of different um, types of coatings, most of them based on hot coat, uh, but some of them, um, reached out a little uh, a little little farther in anti-corrosion and and things like that so uh, Sanford has made its living over the years selling its processes to various companies mostly out of the United States oddly enough you know, a lot name uh, of course but also in Europe um, in Australia we had quite a few systems so 
Stanford has been uh, really just supplying technology as well as consulting services and a little bit of chemistry and power supply. So kind gotcha. of a well-rounded, um, well-rounded uh, group of folks. Okay. All right. Now that COVID is loosening their travel bans, are, are you going to be traveling overseas here shortly? Yeah. I, you know, my thing is um, uh, there's a, we have a, a, a pretty heavy presence, like I said, around the world, but uh, Europe, uh, there's some people that would uh, love to see us and whether it's me personally or some of the staff, are you going to hold on to your mask for a souvenir and pass it on to generations <laughs> after us? <laughs> yes, uh, it's actually funny you say that because I have a mask that has a, a picture of my face on it. So when I put it on, it still looks like me. <laughs> oh, every time I see one of those, I'm just like, you look and then you're like, everything's fine. And you're like, wait, they're not wearing their mask. And then you look at the beginning and you're like, something's not right. And it's, it's the weirdest thing. Like, it's funny, but it's so weird. <laughs> yes. Jack, you're also involved in uh, AAC, right? Yes. Ah, all right. What's your role? Well, I've had several roles there, uh, okay. but mostly uh, board seat. Roles. Okay. Uh, I, was, I was chairman for a while and I'm the immediate past chair and, and effective this September, I will be completing my uh, final term on the board, running a couple of companies at the same time, because <laughs> uh, Sanford's not the only one I run, but mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, you know, tried to uh, make the AAC a better place, and it's a great group. Of, I really valued my time there. Well, thank you, because you just made it easy to get, get into the next subject, uh, which we wanted to talk about is, what, what do you find is the best part about um, the AAC? Oh, there's no question. It's the best part about life, and that is the people. Um, I think, uh, you know, you, you meet uh, people willing to share. You meet people that are, are open to ideas, bringing their own new ideas. Membership uh, is paid for in... In the first 10 minutes of the opening session, when you get there and you talk to somebody who'll tell you something that you go, now that's a good idea. And you go back and it's mm -hmm. because it's been think of or nobody on your staff thought of. And it's, it's just amazing how, how open uh, people are at those things. You know, it's, it's amazing to me. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking about the conferences now and like, I've always had a blast when we go to them, but I've only been to them for the past, like four years now. Yeah. I think, you know, George, I, I think that, you know, fun is, is another thing, you know, uh, I guess I thought more on the business side, but of course they have fun. But uh, to me, it's always amazing that more companies aren't joined to the AAC. So, yeah. If for no other reason than because of the ideas you come home with and the money. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Like ev every time to say, yeah. yeah, we have a conference and everyone's always like, you know, this, I got so much out of this. Like I'm definitely taking things home and we're going to implement those things immediately. Like that's something I've heard from pretty much everyone who, who has come. Yeah. Yeah. AAC is uh, worth every penny and uh, you meet uh, not just, uh, friends for a year or two, but in some cases uh, for life, you know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, you guys have known each other how long, right? <laughs> you and Mark. Long time, and even though we went, uh, you know, different ways in our career, and and uh, you just never know, and it's come full circle. And now I'm uh, talking to Mark again, like, uh, like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we'll you know, see each other in nine, September. Years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. We'll, uh, we'll hoist a cold one in September in Nashville. That's for sure. Yeah, that's, that's, you got that right. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, Jack, uh, any ideas of um, who we should have on our podcast um, going forward? Mean, uh, yeah, come to, off the top of my head. If you let me think about that a little, yeah, I think there's some interesting folks. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I'd be happy to give you uh, some recommendations of people mm -hmm. I think would be uh, well worth uh, well worth your time. Yeah. Okay. Looking uh, looking back at your career, Jack, what would you tell a newcomer into our industry? Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, first of all, you know, I uh, 
you know, I supported my family and, and, and made a, a good living off our industry. Um, it's, I would say it's hard work. It's um, a, um, a, a very well-rounded group of people in that industry. I think uh, we need some young blood uh, to bring us to some new levels and get some new uh, uh, technology into the industry. And, and it's out there and it's available, but we need new, new people to come in. But I think the opportunities for young people like George mm -hmm. uh, are tremendous. And I, I think- Yeah, I, I, I think so too. Pick an industry. Yeah, if you wanna pick an industry that I think um, provides uh, this golden opportunity for the younger generation. This is it because everybody's looking to be in a, you know, a, uh, a high tech medical or a bio field or something like that. But good old manufacturing, um, boy, it's it, it's very exciting. Never a dull moment. Uh, you're never watching the clock. You just it's. Um, I don't know. I always found it a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Good point, Jack. It's always, I always kind of love walking around my daily life and seeing everything that's actually anodized. It gives you kind of a sense of understanding and purpose as it relates to what we do as an industry whole, whether it be an anodizer, True, supply yeah, an anodizer. It's yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to me too. And you walk around and you guys probably get it. And somebody asks you what you do. And my response used to be, well, I, I, I'm part owner in an anodizing company. And they go, anodizing? What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because aluminum is still growing and still taking market share from other materials. And anodizing certainly plays a key in that growth. There's yeah. Yeah. Mark, it's, you know, my thing about anodizing and my, one of the things I've always said, and I, I still find it amazing that anodizers have not done the the job that we need to do in educating our customers to why they anodize their product. Because you take an aluminum product and you do anything with it. I don't care if it's a ballpoint pen or part of a bridge or part of an automobile or a building or whatever. If you're not putting an anodized coating on there, that aluminum is not going to be long for the world. And um, there are other finishes, of course, paint and stuff that, you know, have come about. But truthfully speaking, when you anodize that product, the value of that product goes up so tremendously uh, versus just the, the, the aluminum part of it. But yet as anodizers, we have undervalued the service that we provide, given the fact that it, it enhances the aluminum product so much. And you know, that's something our industry needs to uh, really focus on and educate uh, users of anodized customers is why they're doing it. Because I find a lot of customers don't even know why they say, oh, we do it because it says to on this blueprint. Yes. Hmm. That's, yeah, that's... I didn't realize, you know, I thought it was kind of like self-evident almost that like, you know, it just looks so good afterwards and like you can tell how well protected it is. You try to like scratch it or something and it, you know, just holds up really well. I was just going to ask, when you, when you get a new opportunity, what are some of the keys in your mind that as anodizers, we should be trying to extract that information out from the end user? Yeah, good question, Mark. So one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that I took upon myself to educate our staff on, um, when, when we get uh, calls for anodizing is, you know, the old way was somebody sends you a blueprint that says, hey, quote this, you know, I got 50 parts or a thousand parts and I want to put a type two or a type three on it. Um, and here's the quote. That's not good enough. That customer has to be asked a lot of questions. Why you want to anodize it? What are the benefits you're looking to get out of it? Is it just decorative? Is it corrosion resistance? Is it is it um, electrical resistant? You know, there's so many things anodized does um, that not knowing exactly and just following a blueprint, you actually doing the customer, especially if it's an end user, a major disservice by not questioning them because anodizing is not anodizing is not anodizing. You can play with so many um, uh, 
uh, control variables to enhance what the customer wants and give them better product on the on the actual specifications they need. Uh, able to be dyed, you can do that. If you want it light fast, if you want it to uh, be highly corrosion resistant, there were ways to manipulate the coating if you know what you're doing um, and still meet all your mill specs, but give the customer um, the best product that you can give them for their application. Mm -hmm. So you spend a lot of time up front qualifying the opportunity. Yeah, I would, I would say so. I would say that is really for the customer's benefit. But yeah. my, 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 what I found in my career was that you make a lot of deep rooted um, friend way that will still talk to me today about, Hey, remember you asked me about this and I told you, well, that's one of the best things we ever did with that product because and, you know, it's it's gratifying, but it's also the way I think that the business should be run because one of the reasons customers don't understand why they anodize is because we never tell them. We never tell them what we're doing and how we're doing it. Not so much how, but the, the, the logic behind it and why I'm asking the questions because I can help you make your product better. Jack, that certainly sounds like a lot of your uh, experience when you're out in the road peddling the uh, the anodic coating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now in today, you were a mom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I did my best. Yes, you did. Yes, you still do today. I, I was just going to go in in today's world. You're going more into anodizing shops, are you not? Well, on the, on the Sanford side, yeah, yes. keep in mind, I, I sometimes wear uh, many hats, um, but my two big hats is uh, Sanford. Um, uh, we bought Sanford um, oh, about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, uh, but we're an anodizing company that actually anodizes products um, for our customers. So uh, I jump ship there, I, I bet I'm talking only as Sanford, but uh, if I'm selling anodized, uh, it's a different uh, different set of things. But so Sanford is, is more service in the anodizing industry and anodizes. But our, uh, my my heart, I guess, uh, goes way back to the days when I ran an anodizing shop and then mm -hmm. ended up buying one and um, um, selling to anodized customers as an anodizer. Mm -hmm. um, you, sometimes I forget which hat I'm wearing and who I'm talking to about it, but, but I got anodized in my blood. So, um, yeah. Outstanding. Well, it's, it's, it's a great segue into uh, um, our next topic. So, uh, Jack, um, we do appreciate your time on, on the uh, podcast with us. Hopefully everyone has a better understanding of who you are, who you are. And, I feel like uh, I've learned a lot just now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we appreciate your time today. Not my pleasure. All right. Thanks so much, Jack. All right. And that's our, uh, that's our session for today. Thanks so much, Jack, for joining us today. My pleasure, guys. Thank you for having me. All right. And this has been George, Mark, and Tage. And once again, this is Anotalk, all, all things, things anodizing. anodizing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you next time.